Welcome to part two of my conversation with the trading performance coach, Pat Belluni, which I have the links in the description. Today, we are going to talk more about the money side of things, the money side of trading, financial thermostat, and I'm also going to talk about my experience with risk management to, to understand if the reason that I'm risking less, is it because I'm fearful and why am I fearful? So we dig a little bit deeper into it and I really think that you guys are going to take a lot of value from this. Make sure to check all the links in the description, not only Pat's links, but also my Forex funds, FTMO, my trading EAs, all that helps to build this channel further and helps me make these videos for you. So hope you guys enjoy and let's get into the video. What about the fact that you, uh, I don't know, you, you probably shared it on your on your YouTube where you moved into a new apartment. You moved mm. into a new apartment with, with a friend what, and, and etc. And that apartment is, I don't know if you've shared that it's, uh, uh, let's call it a nice apartment. And, yeah. I be- and I believe that this is where I would like to go into that financial thermostat uh, mm-hmm. side of, of our talk where... Uh, for people that don't know, the financial thermostat is basically that you have a lower echelon and a higher echelon. And every time, ta- and if you people give the idea of a bank statement, that if you were to print out a bank statement and put it on the chart, you would notice that you are always going from the upper to the lower, from the upper to the lower, and it, it will mm-hmm. average out in the middle. And the upper echelon is where you reach an amount of money in your bank account or whatever it is that you deem to be uh, dreamy, like you're like, oh my God, this is great. And that's where you start attracting maybe a parking ticket. Uh, you start buying things that you don't really need and etc., which brings you back lower. And every time you reach your lower echelon, that's when you start working harder. Your work ethic increases. Yeah. So you have your standard, which is your standard. The, the lower e- e- echelon is the standards. And one thing that Hannah Forex said in a video, which I, I don't even think that the video had uh, many views, but I think it was one of her best videos, really, because at least for me, because it really slapped me in the face, which is the most important thing is not to increase your higher echelon. It's actually to increase your standards. But what, what we talked about is that I guess that in a way, increasing your standards is similar to attracting the parking ticket, buying things that you maybe don't really need when you are in the dreamy state because you want to level up your standards. So, for example, I want to go to a restaurant. It, it happened to me even this week, uh, last week, where my friends were like, oh, let's go to a restaurant. And I was like, okay. I'm feeling sushi, but they were like, Mm. oh, it's 17 euros, whatever. And I was like, no, I don't care if it's 17 euros. Like I want to, I want to eat what I want to eat. I don't want to look at the price because Mm -hmm. I want to upgrade my standards. How would you say that we can upgrade those standards without, without continuing with the cycle of, instead of we being in the lower end, Actually, we were in the upper end, but we moved our, ourselves back down. I don't know if I was able to under, uh, to explain it, but how mm-hmm. can we upgrade our standards? Because, for example, for you, going to, into a new apartment, a nicer apartment, it upgrades your standards. Maybe mm-hmm. it upgrades your bills, uh, your bills too. Now you have higher bills and you want to keep yep. up with your standards, so you have to work harder or you yep. have to have a, bit, a better work ethic. How yeah. does that? Yeah. How do you, how do you upgrade your standards without keeping go keep going with the cycle? Okay, I think if you to just be truly objective about it, it's like for the example of the apartment. It's like, what what did I need to do? I just need to increase income, right? So if you to just be truly objective about it, uh, in terms of affording nicer things it's more so about going back and creating a game plan on objectively what's going to help you increase your income so if you know and first and foremost i think one of the best things you can do is actually a lot of people have a fantasy of i want to live in this nice place i want this really nice car i want this really nice watch but they don't know how much it costs and they don't know what the action steps are or the strategy to be able to go off and afford that cost there's not a chance they're going to get it Right. 
So, yeah, I think Hannah, I think Hannah has a great YouTube. Um, I didn't watch that particular video, but it, I'm assuming that she, uh, what she did, some sort of Airbnb in a really nice place. Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That okay. and so, she was very uncomfortable with how much it was per night, even though, yeah, even though she could afford it. It's because, yep. and he said, she said this where she in in unconsciously she thought she was not worth whatever she was paying the that at that time uh, per night okay. in thailand okay. so she wanted yep. to transcend that that's why she went ahead and did it yep okay well i get i get i guess i don't know what the outcome of that was um but uh i would say more so go back to the stuff we talked about at the start of the video with owning owning the trade stuff i think that's a really great <laughs> psychological exercise anybody could do Go and own the wealthiest people that you know, and you'll, you'll be surprised with what you find. But, okay, people don't know how much it costs. People don't know the particular strategy they're going to use to afford that cost. Um, so there's not a chance they're going to be able to accomplish that goal. It's like people saying, I want to go somewhere, but they don't know where they want to go. They don't know how they're going to get there. They're not going to get there. So I think the first thing people can do is, all right, just literally sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and price it up. How much is your dream lifestyle? What's the cost of your dream lifestyle? Um, for me, this was, this was really my dream apartment. I mean, I've, I've been wanting to move into this apartment for four years, um, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, but I knew exactly what the costs were, or at least the, I knew the price range. I knew, all right, this would be the price range. And then I knew that I needed to have a strategy to be able to afford that price range. And for me, that was about having multiple sources of income, diversified sources of income that allowed me to cover that. Now, that seemed, those two things seem very simple, but I feel like most people don't even get that far. They don't know how much it's going to cost and they don't know their particular strategy in getting there. Um, so those would be my first two things. Ground the goal shatter the fantasy, ground it, get down to earth, figure out what the numbers are, and then put a strategy in place to actually financially to be able to afford that particular goal. Now, um, with the particular person I'm, I'm, I'm actually living here with, um, we did multiple Airbnbs in this particular area to get into that situation and to get into and to feel like what it would actually feel like to be living in that particular area. Because it's like what we talked about in our last interview, Kimmel. It's like if you're trying to reach for something or if you're extremely elated by something, it's an indication that you're not resonating on that particular on that particular level. Now, will moving into an Airbnb uh, prior to getting into that place, will that automatically mean you now attract that dream apartment? Probably not. Um, it's probably more so about getting clear on the action steps that will help you create or generate that income and actually putting work in to generate that income, which will be, a better option for people. Um, but I think all the above, it's like putting yourself in that situation, having a strategy to actually be able to afford whatever it costs. Also owning the traits of the wealthiest people, you know, to realize that you have wealth in, uh, this was actually a very, a big breakthrough for me. When I was just trading, I was owning the traits of a very wealthy trader at the time, who was actually a coach in one of the communities we were both part of. And, one thing I came to realize is that a lot of my wealth at that point in my life was in my intellectual property. It was in the things I knew, not in the financial form. And that was a really, like a really just a, it stopped me in, in my tracks. And it, it made me realize that I needed to get this intellectual property out in a way that allowed me to generate income from it as well. If I want to be wealthy like that individual, and I needed to serve people with that information. I needed to help people with that information. Um, so that was one of the big reasons, a big catalyst behind also starting Mastery Trading Mindset, the, the performance coaching and education business I have now. I realized that a lot of my wealth was in my intellectual property. I needed to now go help people with that, serve people with that, charge in fair exchange so I could get paid for that knowledge as well. And then all of a sudden, that intellectual form turns into a form of financial income. Um, so I really think that people will get a good idea of where they hold their wealth if they go and do that exercise and they own the traits. And they find where they have it in their own form. Um, so those those would be my suggestions. You have to price it up. You have to know the cost of your dream lifestyle. You have to know the cost of the dream apartment or house and that type of stuff. Um, and what I found as well is that having a business, working for myself, um, 
having, you know, trading investments, all that type of stuff. Uh, if you go and buy someone a dinner or you go and raise your standard and uh, you splurge a little bit guilt-free or you buy yourself something really nice, what tends to happen is that tends to come back pretty quickly. You get it, you get a large sale in business or you bank a big trade or your investments pump, right? What I found is that if you do it guilt-free and you have this abundance mindset of that, you know, if I spend this, I know it's going to come back. It tends to come back. It's pretty cool. Um, that's been my experience. That doesn't mean that doesn't that doesn't mean <laughs> you spend money you don't have. Um, but uh, I think if you I think if you have a strategy behind it, you have a uh, uh, a strategy behind it. You know exactly how you're going to afford what it is you love, um, and you're you're working at that every day. You attract some pretty cool opportunities. But it has to be grounded. A lot of people are living in fantasies about how much they're going to make. It has to be grounded, numbers based. Okay. Yeah. So, in you would say put yourself in a position where you are kind of living the lifestyle that you can a little bit higher. So you go into a higher frequency because, for example, let's say that sushi costs 17 euros 15 pounds whatever it is instead of being like oh like i don't know it's even pay for other people to put yourself in the mindset of yes i can do this i can i can treat my people too yep by knowing also that the money is going to come it, that yep. puts you in a higher frequency and i think that the key thing that you said was the abundance mindset if you are doing that, it's because you know that money is abundant, that money is just a means of exchange. Money doesn't mean right. anything at the end of the day. It's just a piece of paper. But it's like, okay, you've done this for me. I'll give you this money. So when you do some, when someone else does something for you, I can give you that money. So it's just a means of exchange. And if you have that abundance mindset, it puts you in a higher frequency, which attracts in a way more wealth. Would you say that right. that's how you raise your standards? Well, well, I actually think the way you raise your standards is by doing the work, but spending more money holds you accountable to doing the work. It's like, I love this saying, spend big, make bigger. And would you agree with right. that? To a degree, yes. Um, my mentality is put more in investments, make bigger. So it's like, you know, that, you know, that feeling of, um, you know, that feeling of, oh, I've got a really big paycheck tax times coming up, for example, right. Um, there may be a big paycheck coming, uh, a paycheck that you have to give whatever. Um, that's going to hold people accountable to have to make more money. Right. For example, for me, I know I love spending or I still do love spending money on education. Some of the programs I was spending money on are you know, five, $6,000, for example, right? That holds you accountable to go off and make more money, right? So whenever you have a big paycheck there, you're going to make, if it's important to you, you're going to make money to pay for that particular thing. We all make money for things that are important for us. So now, for example, at the end of the month, I have to put you know $5,000 into investments I'm going to have that accountability to put money in the investments. Now I have to make more money to fill that gap. So I think that's a great way to hold yourself accountable is put money into investments that hold you accountable to create more income. Um, um, you can spend more money on things, but obviously those things are going to depreciate. I'd much rather put my money yeah. in something that's going to appreciate in value. Um, so yeah, spend big on investments, make bigger, but then you also want to treat yourself and have that abundance mindset as well that I can live the life I want. Um, but at the end of the day, the strategy has to be there. There has to be a, a grounded strategy to make money. Um, now, it's difficult. If you're, if you're just trading, that's kind of, to a degree, out of your control. You have to have such a large or a long-term view to let your edge play out. But if you're in some sort of business as well, you know, for example, I know, for example, for me, if I want to get more clientele through the business, I have to do more interviews. I have to do more podcasts. I have to do more YouTube. I have to create more content, right? There are actionable steps there. But I think with trading, it's a little bit different. You have to just let your edge play out over a long period of time. Um, but yeah, I think having a grounded strategy there that allows you to actually generate income is the key. And then 
you have accountability. You don't want to have so much money in the bank that you don't do anything. You know, I found in my journey that there are certain thresholds in my mind that when I have a lot of money in the bank, for example, um, I get pretty lazy. I don't really have the accountability to reach out and contact more people or, or do the work, for example. Um, but then when I have a, that, when it's hitting that lower part of what I, what I feel comfortable with money in the bank, I'm working 12 hours a day to, to outreach and to, to grow business and, and those types of, to, to look for investments, to, you know, eyes in the market, to find opportunities to make income. So I think people find where that balance is for them and hold them accountable. Don't have too much that you get lazy, but just have enough there to have a cash buffer and then put the rest in investments and then hold yourself accountable to do the action steps that will actually help you produce more le- uh, money and level up and empower yourself in all areas of life. And I think that's really where you empower yourself. Um, it's like, I love this saying that good is the enemy of great. I think that's so true when it comes to finances, people get comfortable with a certain mm-hmm. amount in their bank account and that stops them from, you know, taking things to the ne- next level. I've definitely, I, I, um, I, um, I found that in my own life. Um, so yeah, I think that inv- little investment thing, putting more money into investments is a key to hold yourself accountable, to continue to do the action steps, to continue to level up. To answer your question, I think the way you level up is by doing the high priority actions that allow you to level up. It's, it's funny that you talk, that you talked and, a lot and, about investments. Wait, and own the here? traits, yeah. own the traits as well. Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, you talked a lot about investments and that's one of the ways that I personally, I kept just grinding, grinding because there was a point, not not now, for not now exactly, where every time I would uh, get X amount of money uh, transferred to me, it, was, it would not even touch my bank account. It would directly, literally go to my broker and I would buy stocks mm-hmm. with it. There were yep. even times where I was in margin, like I was like, like a couple of percent in margin and everything that I thought about, it was like, how can I, where can I get the money to pay off this margin? So it made right. me actually work harder, which, which was, it's, it's very interesting that that's basically what you're saying. If you put, but do you think that you can use that scarcity mindset in a way, in a productive way? Because no, not, it's not scarcity. Or is it where I'm like, you just hold I yourself, need... it's, it's accountability. It's accountability yeah, okay. graph. You're just holding yourself accountable. I, I know that I'm going to, all right, I, I've automated another $5,000 into my investments at the end of this month. I better bloody have the money in my bank account. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, exactly. It's, just account, okay. it's, a, it's accountability. Now you just have to be, yeah. you have to be careful with trading. You don't, this is, this is really why, this is why I'm such a big promoter that, Trading uh, as an individual source of income isn't necessarily the best thing for most people when they start off. I think having additional sources of income like a job, like a part-time job, like a business are really, really smart to have when trading um, because then you allow yourself to take the pressure off your trading to make money and you allow yourself to just think long-term with your edge. Um because if you put too much pressure on your trading and try and force things that aren't there, that's really a, a recipe for disaster as well. So just that little caveat, I want to slot that in there somewhere. Yeah, it, it, you don't want to be uncomfortable to a point where you start forcing things, but you want to be at the edge of uncomfortable where you start working harder to go back to that comfort. In the way that you do that, instead of spending more money or or doing X, Y, and Z, I guess you just up the amount that you are investing per month, for example, because that's yep. less money that you'll have in your bank account at the end of the day. Yep. And I, I know, for example, for me and my investments, if I'm putting money into my investments, I'm probably not going to touch that for 50 years. Yeah. Probably, pro, I mean, that's the plan right now. I don't, don't, I won't need to touch it. The plans I won't need to touch it for whatever, however much time. So it's not like right, I'm putting that money into investments. I can pull it out if I need it. No, when I put that money in investments, yeah. I'm not touching that for a long time. I've got accountability to, um, yeah, I've got accountability to make more money through business. Um, I, I, I serve more, really the mentality here is I've got accountability to serve more people, to just help more people. That's really what it is because I know if I, I help more people, people are going to 
like you talked about, the exchange of money is a consequence of adding value to people's life. Right? It's a consequence of helping people accomplish what they want to accomplish. Um, I think I've sort of structured things in a way that if I help people enough, they they're gonna you know they want to come into the twelve week challenge, for example, they're gonna pay me for that. I just focus on helping them when they're in there, right? Now, like I mentioned, you don't want to then put the pressure on if you just have trading as a source of income that I have to make money now. I think that there's a little different perspective there if you just have trading as an income that maybe you want to have cash savings there to cover your expenses so that you can focus on executing on your edge over a long period of time. And you have it, still have accountability to doing the action steps like back testing if that's necessary, like waking up and like forecasting and executing your trading plan if that's necessary. You, you want to ensure you have the accountability to still do the action steps that you know will get you an outcome with your trading but you don't want to then put the pressure on yourself. I have to make this amount on my trading body in the month because that's then you imposing an unrealistic expectation onto the market, which is going to lead to yeah. poor decision making, in my opinion. Yeah, I nearly projected back testing onto people. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw you being like just... trading plan in the trading plan too, if necessary. <laughs> you guys need a trading it's plan a... then. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I personally. One thing that I started doing, uh, which which I think maybe was holding me back, I don't know, it was I always had that scarcity mindset towards the money. Like I, I think it was because of my parents. I don't want to blame them. They, they did a great job. They did the best that they could. But that's not that's not what I'm talking about. It's like for me, spending a lot of money, a lot of money, because it's what I believe it's a lot of money too on something for me it was very hard for example for me spending uh, 700 euros on a suit was a lot because like the maximum i bought a suit for was like 120 euros so once i put myself in the abundance mindset of no i want a custom tailored suit i want i want it made from scratch it i think it put me on a higher level of myself every time i say to to anyone that oh i want a custom tailored suit they're like oh my god like why do you want that that's very expensive but i want to be in that mentality of no i can't afford this so i'm gonna buy mm -hmm. it if i want it and i think it's that it's it's that frequency that i'm trying to reach where it doesn't matter how much money it is of course if i'm if i'm looking at watches for as a status symbol of course like i'm not really a watch guy but i do know mm -hmm. that a, a good watch per, gives you that status every time that right. i'm looking at the watches i'm like wow this is very expensive and you know there was one tweet that um i i retweeted and i don't retweet a lot of tweets and it says Anything you look at in awe is you telling yourself this is beyond attainable. Mind notes mm. everything. Stop being impressed so easily. So mm. I do my best to not be impressed by any type of money that it is. This, this steak costs 100 euros. Okay, that's fine. If it's a good steak, I'll buy it. 500 euros for a suit, 700 euros for a suit. It's okay. Like there's... Every time someone now says, tells me, oh, this is very expensive. I'm like, how much is it? And people tell me and I'm like, oh, that's not that expensive. Even if they tell me, even if they tell me like 10,000 euros, I'm definitely not going to say that it's expensive because my mind, again, is going to note that down like, okay, 10,000 euros is expensive. So you're probably on, not on that frequency. So I'm going to, in a way, push you away from it. So mm -hmm. I want to do my best to raise my standards in uh, of having an abundance mindset of, no, I can afford anything. I just have to find the means to it. And that's where yep. you, you stepped in and you're like, okay, what's the plan? What's right. the plan that, to that, be able to afford it? That's exactly right. I think that goes with anything. If it's, if it's, if it's debt, if it's, you know, you have to pay someone back, if it's an expensive, uh, expensive thing, for example, expensive is relative, right? What I call yeah. expensive, there's someone out there calling dirt cheap, right? Yeah. Um, so, and then what's the cost of that? And then how can I convert that into actionable steps that will allow me to get that outcome, right? 
actionable steps, for example, could be things like, all right, how, how really, really, uh, realistically, how do you actually level up the amount of money you make through, through trading? And I think one of the best ways you can do that is by picking up a funded account or two. Because what that does is it, ampl- it amplifies what you're doing. I think, here's a little thing. I think if people go in the mentality that, uh, right, I want to make more money through my trading, I need to do more work, that may not necessarily, or I need to take more trades, that may not necessarily be the right mentality because then you may end up forcing something that isn't there to be traded in the first place. But what I think could be a, a more productive mentality is, all right, I want to make more money through my trading. More work isn't the answer because there are only a certain amount of trades I can take based on my edge anyway. More work isn't the answer. Assuming you already have an edge, right? You, you have a trading plan, you have an edge, yeah. you're, you've got the action steps in there. The better answer is, how can I magnify and leverage the work I'm really doing by picking up a funded account or two or three or taking on investment and then using something like social traders trade copier to leverage that. So I just take, I don't do more work. I just have more capital working for me. Um, so yeah, I would actually, and that's why I'm a, I'm a huge promoter of prop firms at this point in time. In fact, like my whole 12 week challenge is set up in a way to help traders get funded because I know traders put in a lot of work and I want them to be remunerated for the work they put in. I'm not, I'm not saying you have yeah. to do more work. A lot of the times people have to do less work. They just need to leverage what works. And, and the funded how accounts do, are a great way to do that. And how do people get into the same frequency? I, I guess this is this goes, goes back into the videos that we've done before. Of uh, The question that I was going to ask is how do people get in the same frequency of, for example... Uh, when you are a six-figure funded trader, let's say you have a 100k account, you make 20% a month. That's 20k. That's literally what what my parents do, what what my mother, for example, does in two years. So, right. how can you get into that frequency of yeah, like this is something that I do. Own, own the trade. It, it it comes back to a few different things. It comes back to uh, what are the action steps that that, that trader is making a hundred thousand dollars in a single trade doing you realize that they're not doing anything different to you in terms of action steps, right? Um, And then it comes back to what we talked about uh, in our last video, Raph, about finding the, uh, I think I said, find the drawbacks of that figure to take it off the pedestal and then own the traits. Realize that you're already doing it in your own form, in your own life, in your own unique way. Um, And that will make you feel more worthy of that particular achievement. Um, this is, this is, you know, this isn't really theoretical work. This is why I've structured the 12 week challenge with tools and application. I reckon if someone just sits down with a piece of paper and tries to own a trait, find 20, 30 examples, they'll get what I mean. You really have those aha moments of shit. I already do this. I'm, a, I'm already really great at what I do. It's just my own unique form. Um, and that, that in a sense is helping you increase your frequency. You, you know, you freak from a mathematic standpoint or from a physics standpoint, whatever it is, um, the the quicker you see both sides of the equation, the closer you see yourself to other people. So there's less of a gap from self to other. There's less of a gap between negative and positive. The higher the frequency, you know, at the highest frequency, you're seeing both sides simultaneously. Um, and the higher the frequency, the higher your potential energy, the higher your, your potential in life as well. So these exercises that I really promote of finding your form, uh, bringing the self and other together, finding the positives and the negatives, all they're doing is helping you increase your frequency to go to higher levels of awareness. Not that that's better. You're going to have new problems there. Um, But it helps you increase your frequency and it helps you increase your potential in life. Things like getting funded accounts and leveling up and moving into nicer places and associating with, 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 with uh, individuals that are on that level as well, I think all those things happen as a consequence of doing the work, doing the high priority actions and doing the exercises that I've shared in in the last few videos as well. Um, And and again, I'm on this journey too. It's like, this this is literally what I do. If I find someone that I'm like, fuck, that person's really cool, which I have uh, in this particular building a few times actually, I go find my own form of it. And then I go find where they do the opposite uh, this is a, this is a good one. Uh, you find really wealthy people. You have a look at their health or their relationships. They tend to be faltering in those areas. Everybody has two sides to them, right? 
So you, you go find where you have that form in your life. You own that. You find where they have the opposite in their life to balance the equation in your mind. You realize you're a human being. So these are the exercises I do as well, but I'm still on that journey as well. And I think I'm slowly, slowly expanding my awareness. Um, I'm slowly growing in, in wealth. I'm slowly growing in influence to a degree as well. Um, and I just keep doing this. And I imagine I'll be doing this for the next so long time. And we'll see where we end up, see what type of momentum is built. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think this stuff works. I really do. Yeah. I would love to, to put a little bit of my experience forward because I think it might help s some people. I made a video um, called the truth about prop firms uh, in, in parenthesis risk percentage, because, well, you only have 12% drawdown or 10% drawdown, whatever prop firm you choose. The ones that I recommend are my Forex funds and FTMO. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not talking, about other possibilities and what would you tell someone that for example this is happening with myself where i'm slowly building up my risk to to get into that frequency of okay now i don't risk much so if i take a loss it doesn't it it doesn't emotion it i have no emotional attachment to a loss if it's a lower risk what would you tell to me for example that that wants to increase the risk, but maybe is not doing it coming from a side of fear where I'm like, I'm, I, I got my, I got my funded account. It's, it's like, it's my small baby and I want to hold on to it. That's mm -hmm. maybe one of the reasons that is holding me back not to risk more because I'm protecting right. it so much. I'm like, no, 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 this is, this is mine. I want to keep it. What yeah. would you tell to people that maybe are feeling like me where they don't want to scale up because they fear the possibility of losing that account because i don't i also don't want to enter in the cycle of okay this person because that's that happened to me last week where i saw uh, an interview of two guys that they were basically my age and they're they're making like like their net worth is like 10 million they're making a good amount of money And I'm like, fuck, I want to be in that wavelength too. Maybe if I mm -hmm. risk more in every trade that I take and it's a 10R, it's like this, this, this monetary figure, I'll put myself into that frequency quicker. What would you tell to those people that, one, want to rush the process to get to a frequency that maybe they're not on yet. So for example, me, I don't want to risk more just to be able to say, oh, I made 20,000, 50,000 this month. And, so, mm. and instead of doing that, that in the opposite of people that it's my current self, which is, oh, this is my baby. It's mine. I don't want to lose it. Yeah. Yeah, I had a personal experience with this actually. And this was actually the story I was going to tell you before that I forgot. So um One thing that I found, I went through a little bit of a, uh, let's, let's call it a little bit of a downer period. I was a little bit more down than what I usually am. Um, and I love being self-reflective. That's, that's what I love most. Just being able to just sit down on a, on a couch and be self-reflective and have a look at what the hell is going on in your head kind of thing. And what I came to realize is that, and it's sort of me putting together my own study of my studies in human behavior and psychology in my own life and contextualizing it. I find that really cool. And I found that the reason I was in such a downer period, um, like just like sad and uh, down was that um, I had been com comparing myself to other people on the internet, namely Elon Musk, one of the, one of the fucking greatest human beings on planet earth. That would be an interesting one to own the trades on, by the way. Um, it's maybe something I should do as homework. Um, should. Um, and, uh, and what I found is that if you compare what you have right now or you compare what you're doing to someone else that you think has more or you think theirs is better, you can't appreciate what you have. If we compare who we are, our life to a fantasy of how we wish it was, we can't appreciate what it is. So what I was doing in my mind was that I was comparing what I'm doing and all, all the things I'm doing to someone else. And I was dishonoring my form of it. And I was just so infatuated with their form that 
it made me feel like again now this is this is the infatuation and injection dynamic i'm infatuated with him now i'm injecting his beliefs and his priorities into my life thinking that his are better than mine and i was in a sense just for a very short period of time comparing myself to him and negating and depressing my own form of it and feeling down because of that that's what i came that's the conclusion i came to which is accurate i go on and do some work on that cool um I have that awareness now. I don't need to be caught into that little dynamic. But I think a lot of people rush the journey because of that particular dynamic. They look at mentors, they look at other people and they compare themselves to them. They think, oh, this person has such an amazing life. They do such amazing things and I don't, which is not true. Um, and, And they dishonor their form and they try and rush the process as a result. And they, they they stop doing the action steps. They don't stick in their own lane. They try and jump to the next shiny ball and they rush, you know, rush the process. So I think really, and this is, again, I went through this experience myself. I think everybody's going to go through it. Um, I'll probably go through it again a few more times in my life, but not comparing ourselves to other people, not trying to envy and imitate other people, but just get clear on where would I love to be and what's, the specific steps I need to take to get there. And then that gives you like a singularity of focus. You can look at other people for inspiration and to respect them and stuff. But I found for me personally, it's just get clear on what I want to do and just stick to the action steps that I know are proven to get me there. And in a sense, why does it really matter what other people are doing? I know I'm clear on my path. I know exactly what I need to do. I would say that's a very key component um, that would help a lot of people. Um, that's definitely helped me recently as well. Um, and the second component of your question was what, Raf? Can you re- remind me, please? So we now talked about, you now uh, responded to the part where, oh, maybe if I risk this, then I'll be making more money and I'll be more like them. But there, right. there, there's also the opposite, which is where I'm currently at, where okay, maybe I don't want to risk right. more because I want to protect my baby, which is the proper yep. account. Well, this is what I talk about this a lot as well in my videos. It's like the more you infatuate with something, the more you feel losing it. Because, yeah. because you, you try and hold on to it and then ultimately, but this is this is the sort of the paradox you put yourself in. Ultimately, the the more you try and hold on to something, the more likely you are to lose it because you're not giving yourself permission to just do the action, the outcome based, uh, sorry, the, the process based action steps that allow you to consistently execute on that thing to get the results in the first place. And you hesitate towards trades and you close trades down early and et cetera, et cetera, because you're so fearful of losing it. So this is sort of what it comes back to what we talked about in our last uh, video, our last episode together. Take that funded account off the pedestal, find the drawbacks of having that funded account right? And you'll start to realize that, oh, there are actually drawbacks to holding on to this. There are actually drawbacks to having this funded account in my life. And you realize that the funded account is has both positives and negatives, right? It has ups and downs. Um, and that makes you more resilient with it. It makes you less fearful of losing it. The whole, the whole point of my teachings is that you don't want to be focused on the outcome of anything necessarily. You want to be focused. You want to think about what, what, what outcome do you want to have And then what are the action steps? What are the processes? What are the steps? What are the strategies I can do every day that allow me to get that? And day to day, you're not thinking of the outcome. You're not thinking about win, loss. You're not thinking about losing this funded account. You're just thinking about what's the wisest action step for me to take today um, to ultimately help me accomplish that goal that I've already predetermined in my mind. Um, But yeah, I really think that the infatuations over funded accounts, which create the fears of losing them, really hold traders back from doing the process-based things that allow them to get the results they desire in the first place. Um, and the more you fear losing something, um, uh, the more you, the more you want to lose it because you don't want to live in fear and you don't want that thing to control you either. So you put yourself in a real, <laughs> you put yourself in a real uh, predicament and a paradox. That's ultimately why I love this trading mindset and this psychology stuff so much because it can free people from so much crap you're holding on to something. It may not be the funded account. It may be the validation. It may be the, 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 you know, the things you get from it. But uh, going in there and 
finding the drawbacks of the funded account, finding the drawbacks of having validation from the funded account, right? These are all things that can help bring balance to your mind to realize that it's just a tool at the end of the day. It's a great tool. It helps magnify and leverage and scale what you do, but it's just a tool at the end of the day. Um, and then also finding the benefit. You also said you had a fear of losing it. So if you did lose it, how would that, how would that serve you? You know, how would that be a benefit to you? Because you're assuming that we're just going to get a negative without a positive, which isn't true. And that just helps bring more balance to your mind. On top of that, you can ask yourself as well, like what's, what's a wise action step? What's a wise way to proceed with a funded account? Do you, do you potentially need to refine your risk rules? And I put a nice video up on YouTube with what I promote in terms of risk management protocol for funded accounts. Um, but what I promote is people have a risk management protocol with a funded account there. I think I covered it on our last video as well. And then you deal with all the psychological stuff around that and you just continue to execute. That frees you up from the fear of losing it and you just get to stick to your plan as a result. But again, yeah. it's it's the fear, it's the guilt, it's the emotions that are going to stop you from sticking to your, to your trading plan. And it's sticking to your trading plan that ultimately helps you get the results. So it's a little bridge you have to cross. Um, that's really why I put myself in in this position is to help people deal with those psychological challenges so they can get back to their trading plan. Yeah. My um, risk, but- my risk model is a little bit different. Like currently I'm risking 0.1 because I'm building my, my way up into smart money, into trading lower time frames and etc. That's why I'm only risking 0.1. Uh, but okay. I'm, I'm going to be risking up to 0.5 because I, I would okay. In my, in my view, that's the most sustainable way of getting great returns. And yep. uh, well, if you stick to the plan and not having a high risk of losing the account. So you're protecting yourself both ways. Uh, but yep. currently, I think, I don't think that this, this is my strategy so far where I'm risking 0.1. I'm getting the confidence, then scale up more, scale up the risk. Scale up the risk, scale up the risk, all the way up to zero point five. Yep. Now the the I just don't want to get stuck into into the zero point one, just because of the fear of losing it. So, right. Well, I think when you have that buffer, that uh, because the further you move away from the the drawdown buffer, you know the the less fear you're going to have. The closer you get to that drawdown buffer, the more fear you're going to have. So I think the more of a positive buffer you build away from zero, away from that drawdown, the more confidence you're going to have to scale up. So you just see, just monitor it and be self-aware um, and see, all right, I'm now sitting at, you know, positive five or positive 10 for the account. I think, it, you know, I've got, if I, if I risk 0.2, I could take, you know, so many losses before I hit that drawdown buffer. I think you have more confidence and less fear to actually increasing that, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's a wise approach. I think people can learn a lot from that. That you, you want to start small, build a little bit of a buffer up, and have proper risk management protocols in place um, to lower the probability of losing it. Okay, so since I'm since maybe I'm not coming all all that much from a side of fear of losing the account, but for at least for now, I'm not coming that much from a side of fear. Underlying it, underlying is fear. Because I'm like, okay, if I risk 0.5, but the fact that the way that I'm trading right now is not super consistent, I want to, I want to avoid losing it while it's not scalable. The way that I'm trading, once I right. start getting those consistent returns, that's when I start scaling up the risk too. So I think that the way that I'm doing it is a more sustainable way. Where I noticed, okay. I got the funded. It wasn't extremely sustainable. So let me make this sustainable and keep it while I can. So once it is sustainable, I can scale up. Well, if you don't have certainty in your trading plan, that could be driving part of the fear as well. Yeah. And the fear isn't a bad thing. This is a really key point. The fear is the fear is there as feedback, right? It's, it's like when you bur- touch a stove and you burn your hand, every single person is going to be fearful of touching another hot stove in their life. That's not a bad thing. The fear is there bloody stopping you from touching a stove again. So the fear could actually be driving you. um, uh, The fear could potentially a part of the fear could potentially be there because you intuitively know you don't have certainty in your trading plan. 
and you don't want to take trades with your trading plan that you know don't have an edge. So the fear is there keeping you safe from that. So tidying up the trading plan, refining the trading plan, getting clear on that, having certainty in your trading plan, some of the fear may alleviate as well. It could be multiple different components, Raph. Um, uh, but yeah, I think refine that trade, con continuing to get clear in that trading plan and refining it, just getting so crystal clear and certain in it, and then slowly incrementally increasing your risk as you move away from the, the drawdown buffer, all those things will help. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's ask, what I'm personally thinking of doing. And then asking yourself, if I did lose this funding account, how would that be a benefit to me? You'd be able yeah. to create an awesome YouTube video. You'd be able to help a lot of people. You'd be able to alleviate the stress and pressure off a lot of people's shoulders. You'd make a lot of people feel uh, a little bit better about themselves, those who have lost funded accounts, right? There are benefits there to losing funded accounts. And then you can also ask yourself, yeah. what are the three things I can do to lower the probability of losing the funded account? And if I did lose the funding account, what are the three things I can do to lower the impact of it hurting me and hurting my YouTube? These, yeah. these are all great questions you can ask yourself to be prepared and to alleviate that fear. So you get back to your process of just executing your trading plan objectively. But I must say, I think what you're doing is very objective, very wise, um, starting slowly, still refining your trading plan and then scaling up more and more as you get more certain in your plan. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not on the side of fear, if you already have a consistent plan, then uh, maybe you have that infatuation of the prop firm account. But if it's a rational way, if like maybe some people just want to risk 0 0.1, then that's that's just what it is. Uh, yep. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. I understand. It, it. Could, definitely do. Or it could be all the above. It could be yeah. all the above. Um, yeah. Or it could be something else. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. Yeah. I. Um, I think, without a doubt, though, clearing your infatuation with the trading uh, funded account will do so much for your trading. Um, I really do. I, I think that will take a lot of pressure off people's shoulders, take a lot of stress off people's shoulders, it'll allow them just execute on their plan, make them feel worthy of that, and um, as a result, they're going to get better results anyway. Yeah. In the way you remove that infatuation, we talked about it in the last uh, video. So if you guys want to check yep. it out, make sure to check it out. Make sure to check check Pat's YouTube channel because he's constantly posting videos on there. So th how many videos do you ha have already? Definitely more than me, I think. No, 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 no. Uh, I've been doing YouTube for a year now, I think, or 11 months. And I think I have 150 videos, um, yeah, maybe a little really bit more good. now. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm, I'm catching you. My goal, my goal in life is just to beat Raf. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Yeah. Have more videos than me. <laughs> <laughs> have more. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Nah, I don't know. I don't want to put a competition with you on YouTube. I think you'll win. So. Nah. Um. <laughs> but, but yeah, check, check, it, check Pat's YouTube channel out. Uh, you said that you wanted to work with, uh, with that trader that I talked about with you. And you can be sure that... All of us, like we, we are all friends and we are all going to take the 12-week challenge. So make sure to check the 12-week challenge down in the description too. You have a code, a 10% discount code uh, that Pat was kind enough to give it to us. Uh, so yeah, do you want to, should we wrap up? Check his Instagram, YouTube, everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I just want to, I want to provide more value to people. Um, I want to be more of a service. I think there's a lot of, really great traders out there, really good traders out there who are just held back because they don't know the principles um, that will help them get to great. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to message me on Instagram. Don't be afraid to check out my YouTube, comment my YouTube videos. I know I look scary. I know I look angry <laughs> and scary, um, but I'm really, I'm really not. I'm kind of a nice guy sometimes. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out. I really want to help more people. Um, check out my free stuff. And then if, if, if the spirit moves, you check out 12 week challenge. I think there's a lot, a lot of value in there. I really do. Um, if I don't say so myself, um, we've had some really great results in that program. So Raf, yeah. thank you so much for having me on. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Love the questions you ask. Um, and yeah, hopefully a, a part four someday. Hell yeah. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe to all the links in the description and we'll see us next week. Peace.
So yeah, this is it. This is the end of the conversation that I had with Pat Belloni. Make sure to check all the links in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you are still watching, then make sure to drop a, drop a comment with this emoji. Let me know if you guys enjoyed or not this conversation. Let me know if there's any other topics that you would like to talk with Pat, with, to me to talk with Pat. Make sure to check all the links. Get in touch with him on socials if that's what you wish to do so. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I took a lot of value from this. And even while editing this, was it was very, very good to hear the lessons over and over again. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Peace.